planet. Uh, I joined them to do network planning for the domestic telephone network. Uh, they sent me back to grad school where I studied systems theory and sort of got my master's and PhD in disciplines related to systems theory. And I went into educational technology research because um, starting in the 1990s, um, computers were just becoming available to the general public in the schools. And so one of the questions was, how would you use computers in the schools and in general to support uh, education, especially in the technical disciplines, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, so-called STEM disciplines. So I spent 10 years at uh, a company called BBN, which stands for Bolt, Baranek, and Newman, the three founders, and uh, worked on uh, applications of um, computers and, and software uh, and online learning communities to support education. Uh, that lasted for about a decade, and then um, the internet went commercial in the late, or mid to late 90s. Uh, and when the internet went commercial, um, it kind of threw another monkey wrench into um, our group at BBN, and it kind of scattered the four winds. Uh, so then I went uh, over to MIT Media Lab, which I'd already had a relationship with, and we began a, uh, a National Science Foundation funded project um, on my research that Stacy mentioned, the role of emotions in learning, because I developed a mathematical theory relating emotions to learning, and I've been playing around with this, um, these ideas for about 15 years by that time. Um, and at the same time, I had started volunteering on weekends at the Boston Museum of Science. And um, I developed a, an activity there called the puzzle activity. I would bring in little manipulable puzzles. Uh, can, can, you tell me, can you tell me more about your uh, emotional theory? Well, actually, that's a, <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, that's a very long story. In fact, I've- no, Just what, what, you, what you are trying to answer in this theory. Okay, so uh, if you think about our species, human beings, um, our name suggests that we're beings who think, homo sapiens, beings who think, and also in particular beings who learn. And we're not the only creatures on the planet who have the ability to learn, but that's one of our highlights, the ability to learn. And we're also beings who have affected emotional states. Again, we're not the only creatures that have emotions, but so two of the uh, more interesting features of our species is one, the ability to learn, and two, the faculty of having emotions. And the question is, how are they related? Um, is it just a coincidence that we have these two faculties, this ability to learn and this phenomenon of emotions, are they somehow related? And if so, how are they related? Well, keep in mind that um, <clears throat> I had a lot of depth in mathematics in my education, which sort of goes with learning systems theory. And in particular, you know, I, I tend to think in terms of mathematics and subjects, for example, like the calculus. And it occurred to me that if you think of knowledge, knowledge. Uh, by joining us. This is uh, Bob uh, Bur uh, Burkhart. Hi, Bob. I'm in the, <laughs> in the middle of explaining something to Wow. Uh, am I pronouncing your name right? Wael. Wael, okay. Wael. Um, Wael. Uh, so it, it, if you think about knowledge, then learning is the rate at which you gain increments of knowledge over time. So if you think of something simple like the calculus distance and velocity, if knowledge is gaining ground, gaining distance, then the rate of gaining ground in mathematics would be velocity or speed. And in learning, we call learning the rate of gaining ground. So learning is like the first derivative with respect to time of knowledge. That seems pretty straightforward, but then if you're gonna, if you're gonna apply the calculus to gaining knowledge over time, call that the first derivative, then the question is, well, then what's the second derivative? When the rate of learning speeds up or slows down or changes direction. And mm -hmm. the insight that came to me is that we experience the second derivative and higher order derivatives as emotional states. 
I'm going to interrupt for one second because this is an experiment and I just realized maybe it would be a good idea if I create two rooms right now. You can continue discussing that and Wael can ask you questions and I could spend some time with Burke, um, Burke, <laughs> with Bob, um, and then we can come back. We can also chat to each other through the rooms. So if you, once uh -huh. you've acquainted each, you know, yourselves with each other and okay. are ready to join us, we could do that. I have, uh, uh, Stacey, I have something, uh, some point here. Maybe it's interesting for you and Bob, because we think that we look after learning and knowledge. And I think this is something uh, is not, not very accurate for humans that we, we look uh, on us as a learning machines and we develop science to look at this part of our capability uh, and uh, but w w what we need what uh, what the outcome of it uh, the outcome of it is is something we look at and we look at but we don't use it and this is this is also come together with my research uh, what actually what we should use in in collaboration or what collaboration uh, needs. We don't need uh, individual knowledge. We need we need collective consciousness. And 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 when if you remember the question of my, uh, my, Michael about his problem with the computers in Africa, how to get them? Yes. I didn't have any knowledge. I I saw three words: computers uh, in Africa uh, in in UK need to brought to Africa, and I, I just, something, it, within two seconds, I have the answer. He should call the empathy. So what, which knowledge I used here? I didn't look into any, any, any books or we have, if we need knowledge, then we look into, maybe we can look in it. We have Google, we have a lot of people who know in many fields. But at that point, because I was very focused on Michael, and then something gave me the answer. And, and this is this focus, I think it's not knowledge, it's your consciousness. It's, it's, it's pointing you to something, but you have to be at that point. So I sprint for, for, for Michael, uh, Michael uh, niece, and I gave him an answer. Right, but Wael, the point is that that's you and you're one person and we're living in a world trying to figure out why we can't collaborate. And part of the reason is most of us are operating as if everybody is thinking exactly as we are. And I don't think that's ever the case any more so than any of our fingerprints are the same. So uh -huh. the part that Barry said was the sub, the um, subtitle, the subtitle of, uh, so for me, I focused on the emotions and learning because using myself as an example, I'm able to see how I've changed and become more active and involved based on my emotional state. So I can go back and see all these things and that's what I try to bring with me. And it seems to be working. And not everybody responds the same way, but there are two basic ways that I've noticed. So I do notice something about the catalyzers. Somebody else pointed it out today. I posted it, that they are the yes and people. The yes and says a lot. That, you know, I divide people like 